Will they snap it, Bob? Uh, Pontiac game. Got to have patience on offense to run the football and then long uh, passes down the field. Win the kicking game. You got to get a touchdown out of your kicking game. Nebraska, just roll on. They lead the nation in rushing offense and avoid turnovers. Don't do anything to help Kansas State win the game. Two tight ends set for the Wildcats. They'll run the option for the first time. The late pitch to Scobie, and he got the first down. Run out of bounds by Booker from his safety spot. But Scobie gets five, and it's a first down Kansas State. If they want to do, just stay on the field offensively, take some time off the clock, protect their defense from that Nebraska rushing game. A little bit behind him, but Scobie's probably seen that before. It's a good first down. It's, you know, you don't want to come in here to a hostile crowd, a tough place to play, go three and out, turn the ball over. You want to stay on the field, create some momentum for the ball game. So first down. Kansas State just inside its own 29-yard line from the shotgun now. And the keeper by Roberson off the right side, and he's got a lot of room to run, and Booker's trying to track him down and can't. Inside the 30, all the way to the 29-yard line goes Roberson. We said, other than Eric Crouch, he's probably the best runner at quarterback in the Big 12. He showed it there. And it's a good point. He's going to come over to the right side over here from the end zone view. This is a nice play early in the ball game. You can't say enough about Bill Snyder, Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, the planning and scheming. They're going to come out with their best plays early in the game, and that was a well-designed play. Moved one of the backs out of the backfield, took the linebacker with him, and a big play by Rob Roberson. Career-long run for L, 43 yards. First down, Kansas State. And Ascoby stood up. By Shanley, the outside linebacker, and Scobie loses his hat in that exchange. Shanley is a walk-on, an ex-walk-on. Well, Snyder walked out here 13 years ago, now has 103 wins and has done a remarkable job with this Kansas State program. You know, it's a phenomenal job that he did. When you stop to think where Kansas State was before Bill Snyder came and what he's done since. Five straight runs for Kansas State. And this might be a pass. Maybe not either. Giving chase and dropping him. Metro, the linebacker, tracks down Rock Cartwright. Now that was a pass all the way, but the quarterback, who he was trying to throw it back to, there were guys all around the quarterback. If we can see Roberson on this, L's going to try and sneak out, and I think it's uh, Adams, number 98, the end, that doesn't let him get away. Way back at the 35-yard line now. And it's third down and 17, and that certainly changes the complexion of the Kansas State drive. Now that this was point. one of the trick plays that Kansas State had up their sleeves. They pulled it, and it didn't work. Pulled it early. Oh. And they're going to have to hustle to get this playoff. Roberson does. Here comes a blitz. He's hit. Down he goes way back on the Kansas State end of the field. Jamie Burrow, the middle linebacker. It's a loss of 17. Clanton started to collapse that pocket. Well, Burrow inside. There's two linebackers that come in, and Burrow doesn't get blocked. Burrow shows up big in the big games. He had 17 tackles and a sack versus Oklahoma. So from a situation where they were almost in the red zone to a fourth and 34. Ronsick to kick. And he's going to be punting near his own 35-yard yeah. line. Now just don't make it any worse by getting a block. That's right. They have the return on. It's an end-over-end -end punt. Gross thinking about taking it on the bounce, and now he gets out of the way. And this takes a great roll for Kansas State all the way to the five-yard line. So a 47-yard punt. Eric Crouch will bring out the offense. He talked with us about playing his final game at Memorial Stadium. I've learned a lot. I've come a long ways in this program. I've accomplished more uh, probably here at Nebraska than I would have anywhere else. Uh, and uh, I really ex exceeded my expectations of whatever I thought would happen here at Nebraska. And so I'm going to be proud walking out on that field. and I'm going to feel great about the game. And I'm going to go out there and play football. And he's got a first down at his own five-yard line. On the option, Crouch will keep. 
And Eric's got five to the ten. And that gives him a little bit of breathing room with which to work. Eric Crouch, we talked about his numbers, holds virtually all the records for quarterbacks, more touchdowns than anybody in Nebraska history. And there's his season numbers, 1252 through the air and on his way to possibly a thousand yard rushing season. I think I think what he's more proud of is the completion percentage, 58%. They're not throwing any more than they have in the past, but they're just throwing better. Second down at five as you look behind Darren Diedrich. They're stock for the run. Here he comes. Diedrich straight up the middle. First down, Nebraska. Out to the 18-yard line. Offensively for Nebraska, here's the big eaters, and Swanee talked about one of them. Volk, Fonati, Garrison, Rutherford, and Vile Waldrop are the Hosses up front. Diedrich and Davies in the backfield. Thomas and Gibson, the wide receivers, and Tracy Wistrom. One of the best tight ends in college football when healthy. He's been struggling a little bit, but he'll start the ball game, and there he is on the left side on a first down. You got nine guys, ten guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Diedrich. And this time stopped maybe after yard. Oh. And the ball is loose and it's scooped up by Yates. Kansas State says they have it and they do. One of the game solutions early on we talked about was for Nebraska, no turnovers. To don't help Kansas State get into this ball game. Yates with a fumble recovery and Kansas State at the 20. Here's another look. Let's take a look. That ball's out of there. Ball is out, no question about it. Nebraska is 10th out of 12 teams in, in giving the ball, the football away in the conference. They came in with 18 giveaways. That makes their 19th. So now they line up right at the Nebraska 20. Golden opportunity again for Kansas State. Last time they went the wrong way and found themselves in a punting situation. Offside. Roberson. Looked like Kelsey and several others were flying into the neutral zone. <laughs> there was red all over the place in the neutral zone. Yeah, there was about 12 guys on the uh, Kansas State side of the line of scrimmage. John Laurie is our referee. Try to snap. Full start offense. Five yards. Replay. Okay, so they were drawn off. Yep. So that'll back it out to the 25-yard line, first and 15. And that's got to drive uh, Bill crazy. He, he came in. The penalties and turnovers this year. They're last in the conference and being penalized. Most penalized team in the Big 12. And that's all right if you uh, defensively, but offensively you cannot operate with all the penalties. Two tight end set. And now Cartwright and Scobie both come up to try to hear what Roberson is saying. The lone wide receivers to the top of your screen, and that's Brandon Clark. And they'll ride the fullback and the rock. Cartwright inside the 20, down to about the 18, past the original line of scrimmage. He got seven. Behind the defense, we mentioned this, 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 uh, the longer the Wildcats stay in this game, this is a confident team coming in. They are four and four, but this is a team that has beaten Nebraska two of the last three years, and I can't, it's, Make the point enough that when you beat the team two out of three years, you're confident. Second down and eight now. Tight end Lamone in motion option. The pitch to Scobie. Scobie wears Booker out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. It's going to bring up third down and a long five. Scobie on his way, it appears, to a thousand yard season, and he would be only the fifth Wildcat to reach that plateau. Came in 84 yards shy of that mark. He said, he said five 100-yard games already this year, and as we showed you in the open, and he had a huge game, the last, well, two huge games the last two weeks. Back-to-back -back best rushing weeks in Kansas State history against Kansas and last week against Iowa State. Third down and five. Again on the option, the pitch is behind Scobie, and that one cost him probably the first down. You mentioned the pitch earlier, Bob, that was a little bit behind him. This time coming to the left side, he had to reach back for it. Well, I think Roberson tried to get the ball out of the fullback uh, Cartwright's uh, belly, and it looked to me like Rock, the fullback Cartwright, wanted to keep it because he was hanging on, and Roberson looked like he was fighting to get the ball back out. Kansas State hasn't attempted a field goal in nine quarters. They've had all kinds of problems. Three different kickers 
It's been horrible on special teams for him. They've hit, they've hit the uprights all year long. Joe Ream will try to make his first field goal from 34 yards. And it's blocked. The saga continues. It's been like that all year. And you're talking about a team that just a few years ago had a Martine Gramatica. Guys like that. Reem's brother was a great kicker. But they're having their problems with the field goal unit. They miss another. We're still scoreless. So Tim Demerth gets up high on the special teams to block the kick. And we're still scoreless. And the ball goes back to Nebraska. So we've had the ball loose and we've had it fumbled around a bit. Still no score and Nebraska takes over. Maybe three yards on the ground before Kansas State brings down Diedrich and here's that Kansas State defense. Bryant, Reese, Tangiai and Schull. Lieber, Pierce and Buell are the linebackers and in the secondary Petey Fagans, McGraw, Proctor and Newman. A lot of speed back there, not a lot of size, however. And McGraw is one of the leaders, one of the captains. A quick draw. He calls the signals back there. Second down at seven. Diedrich has both hands around the football as he goes straight up the middle to about the 26-yard line. And it brings up third down short. Well, no surprise, the defense against a Nebraska offense is sending eight, nine, and ten guys sometimes up to stop the run. What does that mean? That means that if they make this first down, there may be an opportunity to go down the field in a first down situation for a big play. Haven't allowed a touchdown in the last almost two and a half games. Third down at four. Will keep and he'll go down at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Tangiai from his defensive tackle spot. This, this is a good defense. This is a, this defense is second in the nation against the run. They're showing it, aren't they? Yes, they are. This is a designed run by Crouch and Tangiai and Reese and uh, Lieber and Pierce are there to meet him. Kyle Larson will punt. Bill Bennett's team's done its job to force the kick and Aaron Lockett who was such a sensational punt returner last year hasn't been that this year due to some penalties and some other things and he just gets out of the way of this ball and it goes out of bounds to the 29 yard line. So Kansas State gets it back. So far a battle of field position a blocked field goal a fumble it didn't turn into anything the defenses have controlled so far we're scoreless. Sprint PCS game fact Nebraska and Kansas State the only two teams ranked in the top 10 in the country in both rushing offense and defense this year Nebraska number one on the ground Kansas State number five and Nebraska eighth against the run Kansas State as Bob said earlier second in the country and flags fly all over the field. I always love a penalty right after a timeout. Yeah, it drives you nuts. Even you don't get the Prime ball snapped. Snap. Ball start yeah. offense. Got to be two guys moving. Darren Sproles was the guy that was coming from the near side and running basically toward the quarterback. Snyder returned only four starters from last year's offense. And when you do that, you got to, and then two of his offensive linemen that did return were injured early in the season and out for the year. So a lot of, a lot of new people, a lot of new people. No passing fancy here today. Not Every play's been a run. Every play's a run. Sproles coming around, but they'll keep it straight up the middle with the big fella, and he gets past the original line of scrimmage. Joe Hall, about 290 of him. Well, maybe even bigger than that. Joe who? Dining Hall? Dining Hall. That's what <laughs> one of the Nebraska coaches called him, Joe Dining Hall. <laughs> he weighs 290. He came a couple of years ago to Kansas State from a junior college, was a tailback at the time, and he wasn't much smaller than this. No, he now, really wasn't. If they list him at 290, you know he's got to be over 300. <laughs> They're always more than they list them at. And it's not like Joe ate himself out of that tailback spot. As Bob said, he was pretty much that size when he got here. Yeah. If he fumbled a lot, he'd be a great defensive end. He would be a good defensive end. Yeah. On the shotgun, it'll be the keeper. And 
a first down run for Roberson. They do that very well out of the shotgun. He picks up 10 yards in a first down. We check in at Times Square Stadium now and John Saunders. Right here on the Burger King update, Penn State and Joe Paterno looking for their fourth consecutive victory after losing the first four of the season. Bruce Branch, 71 yards on the punt return. They lead the Illini 7-0. Keep this in mind. A win here and get into 500, and a ball is well within reach. And that's what Kansas State is thinking as well, John. Kansas State and Penn State both went through a stretch. Now they're both back. They have confidence. Here's Sproles taking it on the end around. He's been in motion several times to set up that play. Finally does keep it. He got four. He's a freshman. True freshman. 5'7", 170 pound speedster. There's some other scores. Oklahoma sputtered early against AM. They win again. Texas shuts out Kansas 59 to nothing. Oregon early in that big Pac-10 battle against UCLA. BYU, one of the three undefeated, is tied with Wyoming right now. And another timeout taken here by Kansas State. Their second one here in the opening 10 minutes of the ball game. Now see, this is not good coordination between the quarterback on the field and the sideline. Getting the play in, the quarterback understanding what you want, maybe that's the problem. This is the first year starting for L. Roberson. Maybe it's the play getting in a little bit late, but I would have to say that the problem is that with the quarterback and the player on the field. Bill Snyder in his 13th year, graduate of William Jewell College in Kansas. 103 of the school's 402 all-time wins. They had the eight coaches before him, it took eight guys to win as many games as he's won since he showed up from Iowa as the offensive coordinator for Hayden Fry. He's got this team hoping for a ninth straight bowl game, as we were talking about when uh, John got that report about Penn State. They're looking for their ninth straight bowl appearance. Last year, 11 and 3. Talk about major tournaments. Three. Excuse me. Go ahead, Brad. Three time national coach of the year. That's yeah. pretty good. Eight straight years with nine wins. Four straight with 11 wins. So he, you know, with this program before he took it over, they, I mean, they didn't hardly exist. You had to go back to 1982, the last time they even had an over 500 season before his arrival. Straight up the middle, the fullback to about the 49, Joe Hall again. Joe Hall, the ball carrier. And Greg Bull looking on, the defensive coordinator. Done a nice job with this Nebraska defense. Really has. Took over for Charlie McBride, who was a very popular and a longtime defensive coordinator, 18 years. Charlie was. Uh, Charlie's here today. It was good to see him yesterday. And um, I saw him down getting on the elevator earlier. I said, "Man, Charlie, you look good. It's amazing what a little rest can do." <laughs> He just smiled and said, get to work. Yeah, right. the, philo the philosophy hasn't changed that much around here, though. Third down three from the gun. They like to run out of this formation, but it will be a quarterback draw. And not quite. About a yard shy. Roberson, the ball carrier. Well, Kansas State has yet to put the ball in the air. This is a quarterback draw, as you mentioned. Roberson takes it up the gut. He's about a yard, almost a yard and a half. He was shot. a tad late. He, 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 he was back in the pocket too long. There was a hole there. There was a huge gape. He sold it hole. too long. Didn't yeah. He? yeah. You need to get there when the hole is open. You know, it's not going to be open very long against these guys. Well, they're not going to punt. And we know they're not going to kick. Here they come fourth down in a long run. They are 50% on the season. Look at this. And they set up the old swinging gates. Now they go over to the football. Everybody to the near side, and Roberson has to call their third yeah. timeout, and there's a flag down. Uh, talking about defensive coordinators and all that other stuff as we just were, Nebraska was ready for anything. When they lined up with one center over the ball and ten guys way to the left, Nebraska was ready. When they moved back, the black shirts were ready for that. Not only did they have that play lined up, it didn't work, but they took a penalty as well. And Bob and Brad, here's where experience really pays off. You get a guy like Frank Solich, who's been in Nebraska for a number of years, even while he wasn't a head coach, you develop an understanding of how your opponent likes to work, the things that they're capable of, then you can get your team prepared for that. They probably have seen this maybe zero times this season, yet they're ready for it the first time it occurs. Great coaching. Two back in the punt return 
set up, awaiting the kick. And is there going to be a halo violation? I think so. Bortleson, who had a touchdown on a punt return last week, is back there. Flags are down. Derek Yates, I think, is the guy that might have been guilty. He's the one that recovered the Kansas State fumble earlier. Kick catch interference, five yards, first down. So Kansas State's penalized again. That's their fourth penalty. Yeah, you got to give him six feet. He's trying to back out of the yeah, way, the but he only gave is, about three. Yeah, problem is that when you're when you're fighting a guy coming down, covering the punt, and you're fighting somebody that's blocking you, and the punt is short and the guy's coming up, you don't know where that six foot ring is. Plus, so the so it, the closer he gets to you, the closer I mean you you're running at him and you don't it's not intentional some most of the time. After running a 40 yard dash, it's hard to put the brakes on sometimes yeah. too. Frank Solich. Nebraska. Ten or more wins three times for yeah. Frank. Nebraska, Brad, two possessions, three and out on both of them. Crouch drops back, and he's got a man open. But he threw it late, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tyler. Kansas State gets it right back. Deron Tyler. Well, I, I, was, I was wondering when they would go to the air because if it's, it's nine or ten guys against the run, you're going to see the receiver coming from the left side of the screen. This is who he's throwing the ball to right here. He's going to head, head the ball over to the side. That's a great play. Look at that interception, huh? Great play. Right in front of Gibson, the intended receiver. As Eric Crouch threw it just a split second too late, and Kansas State's got it right back in Nebraska territory. Not the first trip here in the first quarter, but they're over as far as points. Roberson pump fakes, airs it long. And almost intercepted right back by Dewan Gross, yeah. intended for Ricky Lloyd. Well, when you throw it up, you got single coverage like we mentioned in the in the game solutions. Patience with the running game and long passes down the field. This is what their recipe has been. This is what Nebraska is expecting. When you get a one-on-one -on -one situation, then you got to have your receiver go up and make a play. And that's what it was. Right through Lloyd's hands. Gross almost had a gift, but couldn't hold it. Now three wide receivers all to the near side on second down and 10. K-State at the Nebraska 38. Roberson getting some heat. He's got a man open. He overshot Cartwright, his fullback. The passing game is not the strong suit for Kansas State this year. No, it's not. They, in fact, uh, they, uh, they rank 105th in the nation in passing efficiency. And as we mentioned, uh, they rank fifth in the nation in rushing. So running is their game. And passing, uh, if they have to pass, that's not where they want to be. And now they got a third down to 10. And here's what Bob was talking about. Fifth on the ground and 105th in the air. Here comes a blitz. Roberson has time. Overshot. A wide open Aaron Lockett. He had him. At the 25-yard line, yep. Lockett had a couple steps. That's that's why what he's gonna come from over here on this side. This is why what Eric Crouch can do is so impressive because he can run the football and Roberson can run. Here, look here. Look how wide open he is. Crouch can not only run the ball very well, as Roberson can, but he can throw it pretty well. Rossick will have to punt again. Dewan Gross waiting back at the 10-yard line. Trying to head it to the corner, and he got the corner of the end zone. Touchback. So Nebraska will take over at the 20. Frank Solich, who played here. As well as coached here so long under Tom Osborne before taking over as the head coach. But looking back, he was a fullback. He's not the biggest guy in the world. <laughs> Little Frankie Solich. Due to under calling signals, dropping back to 12 to 50. Rolls out. He's chased. Has to get it away. He's got so much over. He's got it to 12 to 5. He's in. Frank Solich took that ball at the run. And the Huskers are back in it. Little Frankie Solich, the fullback. Cut across. <laughs> I'll look back uh -huh. as a player. He was 
Still the only Nebraska fullback that's ever rushed for 200 yards in a game. At his size, he was considered the fullback in that formation for Bob Devaney. Barry Alvarez, the Wisconsin coach, was a linebacker on that team, and they actually called him Fast Frankie more than Little Frankie. But nonetheless, he is not the biggest of stature, but he's getting a bigger stature around here right now, especially with a 10 0 record. Oh, if they can sure. keep it going. For sure. You know, he seems a lot uh, looser. He smiles a lot more. This is his fourth year of coaching, and uh, he only has three losses the last three years. On the option, it's the fullback. Speaking of fullbacks, and he's close to a first down. I think he's got it. Judd Davies goes straight ahead for about six yards. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you. Nothing's better. Dr. Pepper. Mutual of Omaha, providing insurance and financial services. And Dell Enterprise Systems that are easy to build, easy to own, easy as Dell. Perfect day in Lincoln, Nebraska. There is not a cloud to be seen. And we have been here when it's been snowing this time of year. It's gorgeous right now. Diedrich on a pitch, taking it to the corner. And he got the corner out for about six, maybe seven yards. Actually, they might have given him more than that. I don't think he flew out of bounds till he almost got to the stick. This offense has always been very physical. The offensive line, they've got a lot of different ways to, to, to get at you. The option, the power game, or the toss game, and they're very bright. There's Fono T number 77. Throws one guy down. On Pierce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he's an interesting guy to watch. We'll be watching him all day. Number 77. He threw one lineman down, then he went after McGraw, the safety. Second down and three. Deidre got a first down. Bursts out near the 47 yard line. He's quick. He is quick. And he's strong. He's 225 pounds. Bob Benchin moved to Toronto when he was 13. Actually grew up before that in Jamaica. 33 yards so far from there, not six carries. Somebody lost their lid there in the middle of the pile. Helmets flying. Some banging today. going on. Yeah, there. there's some hitting going on. There usually is between these two teams. It's the 86th meeting. At Kansas State in 86 meetings is only won seven times in Lincoln, and the last one was 1968. Here's Diedrich again, and he dives in to Kansas State territory at the 49-yard line. Fourth possession of the game for Nebraska already here in the first quarter. Two three and outs on punts. Then they had a, a one-play interception. And now this drive. Bob and Brad, I think one of the things Nebraska is going to be tested on today is their own individual focus. You know, they could possibly play, play 14 games a season. This will be their 11th in that year. Second down. Here's Crouch by the keeper. Eric Crouch. And a first down, down to the 37-yard line. Pick up a 12 for Crouch. It just keeps adding to that total. You know, came in with third, uh, 3,166 yards on the ground. And we talk about the running backs, Diedrich and Davies, but this guy is the most dangerous of all because when he gets turned up, he's faster than any of those guys. Yep. I think we were talking to him yesterday, and only Sweeney, the defensive back, is faster on this ball club than is uh, Crouch. At the end of the first quarter, Nebraska and Kansas State scoreless here in Lincoln. And ABC Sports Press presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. It's even wasn't uh, a lot to talk about offensively, that's for sure. Nebraska had two turnovers, a fumble and an interception. Kansas State got the ball inside the Nebraska 40-yard line twice and came away with no points. It's a first down at the 38-yard line. Here's Diedrich. Keeps those legs driving and gets down near the 33-yard line. Terry Pierce, middle linebacker, made the stop. from behind the defense of that offensive line. What I like about the offensive line they do so well is the backside of the cutoff. They get downfield. All the offensive linemen that play for Nebraska that I've ever seen have good feet. 
They're, they're, they're like dancing bears. They can pull and get around. <laughs> oh, they slide. They're 300 pounds, but they can slither through and get downfield. Here's Diedrich. Puts a hand down and leads forward to about the 31 yard line. This guy is one of the first guys Frank recruited when he knew he was going to become the head coach. Kind of interesting. The day before the announcement, uh, I was in Darren Dietrich's home in Canada. Uh, and uh, uh, the next day uh, was going to be announced by Tom that he was going to retire. And, and no one really knew other than myself. Uh, I thought it was probably. Uh, uh, a good time for me to mention to, to Darren that uh, while I was in his home that uh, come tomorrow um, there's going to be a new head coach in Nebraska and I wasn't real sure how he was going to look at that you know because Tom's so successful and such a big name around the around the country and so I told him that night and Darren looked at me and said hey that's great I got a special win with a head coach. <laughs> He's got a pretty good in with a head coach after that first down run too as he gets to the 26 yard line. It's a good story. It is a good story. We asked uh, Diedrich about it. He he said the same thing. He said, hey, that's pretty good. I've had the head coach here recruiting me. So first down, Nebraska. Tenth play of the drive. They've run them all. Here's Crouch. Fakes the pitch. And he's dropped in his tracks. Might have lost a yard. You talk about uh, Solich, uh, Brad. You stop to think. You go back to Devaney and Osborne. They've had three coaches here since 1962. That's almost 40 years they've had three coaches. One of them won two championships, one won three, and Frank's looking for his first, and not a bad record so far. And, huh? and, and, and because of that continuity in the program, that's why they've been so successful. Takes a special kind of guy to try to live in those two shadows, too. Look at the bunch down here. Second and 11, quarterback draw for Crouch. Nothing. Eric's cut off at the pass again, and it's Henry Bryant that made the play. We talk about the coaching legends, Bob Devaney, Won a couple of championships. Tom Osborne, when he hit the mid-90s, put three together within a four-year span. And look at all the conference crowns. And when I say shadows, those babies cast a couple <laughs> pretty good-sized ones hey, right there. We, uh, we we were over in their building, their football building, and they had a lot of trophies from the Orange Bowl. We had Nebraska down in Miami a lot of times. They want to get to the Rose Bowl this year. Yes. Third down and 11. Just about half the pass. Trips up there to the top of your screen and crouched down the middle. Boy, threw a strike. It wouldn't have been a first down anyway. Thunder Collins couldn't hold it. He put a lot on that ball, and Thunder laid out for it. Incomplete. Well, if they go for a field goal, what's it going to be about? Um, It'll be about 44? 45 yards. 44. Josh Brown will try it. It is, as Bob said, a 44-yard attempt. 43 is his longest, and he missed it to the left. So neither kicker has been able to convert. Josh Brown misses, and we're still scoreless. 11 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first half. Second-ranked Nebraska misses a field goal opportunity. Score 11:57 till halftime. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew with you from Lincoln, Nebraska. Where Kansas State takes over at the 28-yard line, and Scobie brought down after he picks up five. Time for our Aflac trivia question for the week. Nebraska has won five national championships. Name the three other teams in the country with three or more of those titles. We'll have the answer for you a little bit later on. That's a good one. That's the only one I've come up with all year. But thank you. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Second down and five. Starting field position, it's been all Kansas State today. Their average starting field position from their own 43. And Nebraska from their own 17. The only problem for Kansas State is Nebraska's defense hasn't let them do anything with that field position as Kelsey makes his stop. This is a, one of the best defenses in the country. They rank fifth coming in, eighth against the run, and they they just shutting everybody down. Kelsey's really playing well. Lately. He has been playing well. He leads the team in sacks and tackles for loss with 17. One of the black shirts, and of course, Trev Alberts and Grant Wistrom and Kyle Vandenbosch all played that rush in, so you have to live up to that when you play in that spot. 
Here's Roberson. I don't know if it's a quarterback draw by design, but it doesn't pick up a first down regardless. It's a pickup of two, and that's it. Here comes the punting unit again. Kelsey again made the stop. Kelsey on the side, 57. It's Nelson from the other side that's going to flush him out of the pocket. And Kelsey keeps his head up and sees. He's got good vision and makes the play. We told you he's been playing well. That was a heck of a series for Chris Kelsey. And it forces a kick. Ronsick to punt. And the kick again, a wobbler. This one's fielded by Gross. Bounces off a couple would be tacklers and got out to about the 38, maybe the 39 yard line. John McGraw on the special teams made the stop. As Gross will have to put his shoe back on. Our BCS standings coming into the day. Nebraska on top. While Miami was ranked number one in the polls, Nebraska atop the BCS. Oklahoma struggled a little bit today, but they got going and beat AM. Oregon, Florida, Washington, Washington State, and Michigan round out the top ten. Florida with an all-important game against South Carolina coming up tonight in Columbia. You can see that game on ESPN. Miami and Oklahoma had some scares they today. Sure did. You know, no, Oklahoma, we were talking earlier, can really control its own destiny if they just win the rest of the ball game. Eric Crouch off play action, wants to throw a screen back to Thunder Collins, and he's got blockers in front and a lot of green. Thunder and down the sideline. Collins all the way to the 16-yard line. Nobody home on the backside defensively for Kansas State. It's a pickup of 45. One of the things that these teams do is they adjust very quickly to what you're doing defensively. Here it is right here. He's going to thunder over. He's going to play. He's going to go this way. He's going to throw the back, throw the ball back over to Collins. Little play action fake. Now throws it back. Now look, there is nobody out here. He's got two blockers on one guy. He's got Fonity through one and then goodbye. Yes. Garrison, the center, is looking for somebody to block. First completion is good for 45 yards. Crouch gives off to the fullback. And inside the 15 is Judd Davies. He got so, so excited about a completion, I didn't know what to do here. Well, this might be the most exciting completion of the year. Of course, this is against Oklahoma. And the freshman quarterback with the left hand lays it out 63 yards to Eric Crouch. That is the play that won that game. And I asked Eric yesterday, I said, did you say anything special in the <laughs> huddle when that play was called, when the freshman came in? He said, no, I didn't want to say anything to him. I didn't want to make him any nervous. And Stunt said it worked better in the game than it ever did in practice. Crouch, great move inside the five. Touchdown, Eric Crouch. What a move he put on at about the seven-yard line, and he scores from 14 out. touchdown of the year the 57th of his career extra point by Brown is up and good so the long pass play to Thunder Collins got him down close and then Eric Crouch did the rest it's like and make it reverse he's going to fake it in here and then come this way but nobody goes with him watch out but right there there's nobody there only only the wide receivers are out there with him. Not only does he have tremendous speed and balance, but he's got the quickness and the shiftiness. It's a lethal combination. Yates is the guy that he faked out of his pants right there, number 12, and then Tongi, I was the last guy with a shot. And Bob, and I think much of that was set up by the fact that in this drive and drives before, what Nebraska did was pound the ball inside. I mean, they've got a good eye back who can run the ball. They can power it up the field. Once you start doing that and getting a defense to pay attention to the inside, the outside should open up, and then a guy like Eric Crouch can take advantage of it. And then you know they've been these coaches have been together for so long that if it, they come up against a defense that they're not expecting or they're doing something to take one thing away, they'll just shift to something else and and, and, and beat you. And, and finally on the fifth or sixth possession, they got it in the end zone. Round a kick. Lock it back deep. We'll take it from about the 10. Aaron Lockett. All fenced in again. 
One of the great kick returners in the country, and they will not give him anything. Ringenberg, the backup tight end, made the stop on the special teams. Our Nissan drive summary. 62 yards in just three plays, a 45-yard throwback screen to Collins, and then Eric Crouch did it from 14 yards out, 7-0 yeah. Nebraska. And it was, you know, this offense is powerful, and it's sneaky. It's tricky in some ways, and the trick play got him down there, got him going, and then Crouch took it in. That's what Bill Snyder talked with you and I and Swanee about so much this week. He said, they're so efficient in what they do, and then they'll trick you. Yeah. Kansas State play action. Roberson waits, fires deep. He's got a man and a great diving catch by Brandon oh, Clark. What a throw and catch. Clark, oh, they're going to say it yeah. hit the ground. Yeah, it would have been a spectacular catch because the coverage was there. I thought he had it. This is a guy that had a huge game in that one point loss to Oklahoma, Brandon Clark. He's going to be right down the middle. Craver is going to be on the coverage. You'll see right at the bottom, the coverage is there. Oh, good yeah, call. Good call. Good the, call. Back, the back judge is right there. Good, good call. Great shot of it by our guys from the end zone. Second down at 10. Play action again. He wanted to throw a screen or get rid of it. It's intercepted. This is going to be a touchdown. Willie Amos. <laughs> Got it down to the three-yard line. I thought he, he, he stepped in. out at the three. Personal foul on the offense, 15 yards. The extra point will be tried. No, he did get in. The flag was thrown there. Okay. Yeah, watch. Here's here's why. Watch the nose tackle, Clanton, put the pressure on him. Just runs around the the, the right guard, and he throws it ill-advised. Throw it late to the outside. Amos makes a nice play. Takes it in for the touchdown, and now the extra point is going to be from way out after the personal foul at the end so the extra point basically is a 35 yarder 34 yarder for Josh Brown the long extra point is no good so put that one in the books just in case yep. Missed extra point. But the defense has played so well against Kansas State. An ill-advised throw, as Bob said. And Willie Amos took it to the barn. 14 yards out. 13-0 Nebraska. The world-class jump roper and the <laughs> fastest guy on this team just took it away and took it to the end zone. Yeah, and they've done that before. A lot of takeaways, a lot of points off takeaways. Josh Brown with a pop-up kickoff taken by Scoby and whistled dead I think they called fair catch not to advance it'll be Kansas State offensively ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan Nissan driven Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down make it a Bud Light Capital One who asks what's in your wallet and Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. Outside Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, which becomes a city unto itself every Saturday. And a sea of red. It's quite a scene here. If you've never been here, if you ever get the chance, take in a football game in this city. It's something else. And they start early. I'll put it this way. They go late and they start early. There you go. Yeah, it was noisy last night around here. Oh, yes. First down from the 21. And here's Roberson. He broke a tackle, and he's got a first down run and then some. Picked up about 17 on the carry. That's what he does well. He does, and that's what he needs to get that going to get some confidence in his ability to play in the ball game because he's not going to throw against this defense a lot. You're going to have to run the football. 
you know, Nebraska just had a big play for a touchdown, a takeaway, ran it in the end zone. That's good for the defense, but what's bad for the defense is you just scored, you got to go right back out there and right. play some more. Well, we have one completed pass so far today, and that was to Thunder Collins. Actually, we had three completed if you consider throwing it to the opposition. As Kobe goes out of bounds near the 44 yard line. Our Aflac trivia question Nebraska has won five national championships. Name the other three teams with five or more titles. Big names, as you might guess Notre Dame, Oklahoma, including last year's, and Alabama. Uh huh. The storied programs in college football. Miami has four going for another one this year. And they almost didn't get out of Boston today. Yep, that's for sure. Second down, long four. Empty backfield, the quarterback keeper. He got two of it. He'll still need to on third down after we check in with John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John. Well, guys, you know that Florida State's in the driver's seat in the ACC unless they stumble against NC State, right? Robinson three yards out, and it's a 21 to 14 lead now. NC State on top, Florida State right now tied with Maryland. Chris Ricks already a touchdown pass in that one. Eric Crouch has a long completion to Thunder Collins and then a 14 yard run. That with Willie Amos's interception return for a touchdown is where we are. Third down at two. And they're out of timeouts, aren't they? Yeah, no. Did they have one left? They uh, they tried to take one while back, but they had a penalty that uh, they didn't allow them to take the timeout. So now they do use the final one. <sighs> 6 45 till halftime in Cornhusker land. They're up by 13. The black shirts hoping to stop a third and two. That's John Clanton, and he's he taking over for Jason Lohr, who blew his knee out yeah, of it. He was responsible for that interception for a touchdown, pressuring the quarterback. Third down at two. On the option. Pitch. Scobie's got the first. Taken out at about midfield. And picks up the first down. Our Pacific Life game summary. To this point, not a lot of passing, no passing yards <laughs> for Kansas State. And they haven't done anything off the two Nebraska turnovers. No, they haven't. And Eric Crouch has the touchdown run. Nebraska almost 100 yards on the ground rushing. And of course, they got that one pass to Thunder Collins. But yeah. keep in mind, Willie Amos is intercepted. There you go. I was Willie Amos. I'd seven. say, hey, yeah. give me in the summer. That's right. Now we got Willie in there. No gain on that play as Jamie Burrow made the stop on Scobie. Jamie Burrow, his daddy played here in the mid 70s. Yep. I'll tell you what, he's a beneficiary of those two tackles up in front of him, though. John Clanton and Jeremy select a 55 and 56 right in front of him, doing a lot of good things to allow Burrow just to run and make plays. Not only did his daddy play here, but his. Fifth generation on his mom's yeah. side. They had a lot of people going to Nebraska in that family. Incomplete pass again. Roberson's hit by Shabu. The rush of Nebraska on a pass intended for the tight end Warren. Yeah, Burrow's dad is a GA. He was a high school coach or a college coach, and just this year for the first time at Nebraska as a graduate assistant. Now, Jamie grew up in Ames, Iowa, and his dad was an assistant at Iowa State and loved Iowa State football, but. You go where your dad went and where your mom had five generations going. You're Cornhusker. He waited five years to wear a black shirt. He's proud of it. The thing I like, J.D., the player, was here before his dad came back. You got to love that. Yeah. Third down and ten. Roberson wants to throw a wide out screen. That might be holding a pass interference. Nope. It was Vedrill who hit the intended receiver. No flags. And Kansas State's got to give it up. Yeah, he got away with one there. He looked like he had a wing, didn't he? Yeah, I think they got away with one. That was one of the things. Take a look at the, uh, the end zone. Go ahead and run it. And we'll look to the left side. Look to the left side. We're going to stop it right about here. Look at this. Look at that right there. Bedro. You. Whoa. Just about took Lockett's elbow off. That's what he was trying to get to. Here's a punt. Gross. Trying to get everyone out of the way. Takes a Kansas State bounce. All the way down to the seven-yard line. Out of bounds. Nice kick. 
43 yard kick pins them down inside the 10 yard line reminder next Saturday 3:30 Eastern number four Oklahoma heads to the Lone Star State to take on Big 12 opponent Texas Tech other regional action Syracuse and Miami Washington State and Washington and Michigan against Wisconsin in the Big Ten check the local listings for the game in your area and of course one of the three unbeatens is here Miami stayed that way had a late scare Boston College had a first and goal and Ed Reed took an interception about 90 yards for a touchdown BYU also undefeated coming in here's Deidre and he's upended after he picked up about a half yard to run Tyler from the corner tripped him up It'll bring up second down and nine. Five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Nebraska leading 13 to nothing. Talking to Phil Bennett during the week, the defensive coordinator, he says, uh, in the past, we've had success slowing down their running game by slanting our, off, our defensive lineman up front, slanting the defensive lineman and forcing the pitch. We want the ball out of Crouch's hands into anybody's hands. There's a pitch to Dietrich. They fake the end around, and he keeps it out to about the 22-yard line. Now, that's one thing that Bill Snyder talked about as well. He said, you know, if you make Eric Crouch pitch it, at least you know he's not going to get it back. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Pick your poison, huh? Uh huh? He doesn't want it in his hands. He's the, <laughs> like we mentioned, he's got some speed. Here's a third down and seven coming up for Nebraska. Crouch hustles into the huddle with the call from the 22-yard line. Both wideouts to his right. We've got single coverage out there, too. Now, man in motion. There's play action. He wants to throw to Davies, his fullback, but he couldn't keep his footing. Was thrown behind him, and Judd hits the turf. Actually lost yardage. It'll bring up fourth down and nine. Yeah, if that ball is up where he can catch it, he's got a lot of room to run. So another completion, but it's for a loss of a couple. And the punt will come for Nebraska. Back near their own goal line. There's Lockett waiting in the shadows. Kyle Larson to punt. Lockett returned three punts for touchdowns last year. Averaged almost 23 yards of punt return. This top the nation. Oh, there's a bad snap. And it's caught. Kansas State stuffs it after a bad snap, and they've got it inside the 10. Terrence Newman is the guy that got there. Well, Kansas State has had great special teams in the past. They haven't shown up too much this year. It starts off with a bad snap, which delays it, and then they had a block on. That makes it worse. And knew, yeah. If they had a return on, nobody would have been close to it. There's the snap. He did what he could, but Newman was there, and then Deron Tyler was the recipient of the fumble recovery. He's going to come right through here. He's going to go and hit with a little uh, swing around the side, and then he gets right up in front. Kansas State will go two tight ends. And an eye backfield now. First and goal at the Nebraska 7. Got a score here. Scobie puts his head down, and he's throttled after a yard game. That's the third turnover that Kansas State has gotten from Nebraska, and they have yet to score. Second down and goal. I mean, you'd love to get a touchdown here at Kansas State, but at least you got to get on the board. Nebraska hasn't given up one on the ground in 11 quarters and only four all season. Four all season, and, and, and Kansas State has rushed for 25 touchdowns on the ground, so something's got to give. Don't you use a little option here when you've got a guy that can run it? I think uh, you do what, what he does best, and that's it. Here it comes. He'll keep it, and it's a touchdown. Nice call, partner. Roberson takes it five yards for the score. Well, they just had the score on this one. If they hadn't scored, Snyder would have had a tough time firing his troops up to come back out for the second half. Good point. So finally, a turnover turns into a touchdown. And Al Roberson with his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Well, we talked about early on the game solutions that they needed some turnovers and takeaways to help them against this Nebraska team, and they've gotten three. Even the extra points have been a circus this year, but Reem knocks this one through. Extra point is good. And courtesy of a block punt, a couple plays later, it's Roberson for the touchdown, and the lead's been cut to six.
end zone view of this. Here's Burrow, the middle linebacker. He's going to overrun the play just a tad. The ball starts. He thinks it's going to be an option. Now look what he's got here. He sees this lane back in here, and that's where Roberson wants to get to. He sees it. Amos keeps running. He thinks it's going to go wide. That's just a nice play by a quarterback doing what he does best. And this is what set it up. The Kansas State special teams over the years under Bill Snyder have been outstanding. Joe Ream now to kick. Josh Davis, three yards deep, will bring it out. Davis got out near his number, out to about the 24-yard line. That's where Nebraska will go to work. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Nissan. Nissan driven. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Capital One who asks what's in your wallet. And Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. From the Midwest on a gorgeous day in Lincoln, Nebraska, Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew from Memorial Stadium. There Nebraska leads. Eric Crouch squirts out of that pile, and he goes out to the 37-yard line. 13 yards, just like that. He can stop and start on a dime. Uh, they've got plenty of time to score. I mean, it doesn't take Crouch long to run. He's just going to go right up in this hole over here to the right side. He's going to fake the Thunder Collins right here, and then it has a tackle that's both coming around. He's got the speed to take it all the way. He sure does. Out to the 37. Eric's got 50 yards rushing now. <laughs> the ABC crouch ball. Yeah, that'd be good. He broke a tackle here. Keeps his balance. And got two or three. Melvin Williams, the guy that put the pressure on. And Eric spun out of his grasp. Eric's had, they'll take a timeout. Yeah, he's had some amazing runs this year. Bill Snyder mentioned the one at Missouri when he was in the end zone. Keeps his balance there, but he was in the end zone, backed up in his own end zone, avoided a, a sack for a safety, and ran like 97, 98 yards. Take a look. Watch this. He makes it about seven guys miss and goes 95 yards. He already made one, two, three, four, five, six guys, seven. Out runs the eighth guy. <laughs> then goodbye. 95-yard touchdown run, one of the great plays in college football this season. And then he just walks back like nothing happened. As Swanee said, you run 95 yards, you want to gas out in the end zone. <laughs> I mean, that's a long ways. Yeah. And he is fast. Not many guys ever beat him in sprints in high school. He talked with us about that. When I was a junior in track in high school, uh, never won a, a race, never got a gold medal. And then I told myself, you know, I, I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can in the offseason. And then when I was a senior, I got all gold medals uh, in, in my sprinting uh, 100 and 200, except in the state, in the, in the last, very last race. I, I lost to Erwin Sweeney, who's on the team, so I guess that's okay. Erwin Sweeney, the only guy that ever beat him as a senior in the sprint season. As long as he's one of my guys, that's okay. <laughs> There's Erwin on the sideline. It's a second down and eight. Nebraska, two timeouts remaining. A little over two minutes, and Crouch goes down this time. Nice play. Andrew Schull, the sophomore defensive end out of Webb City, Missouri. Same hometown as Grant and Tracy Wistrom makes the stop. Two minutes left in the half, and coming up at halftime, the Capital One Halftime Show. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will be along from Times Square Stadium in New York with all the scores and highlights from today's games. And Nebraska is going to take another one right here to talk it over with 148 remaining in the half. Little confusion as to the play call of the formation. So a timeout with 148 left. Reminder coming up Monday Night Football, 9 o'clock Eastern. Pittsburgh. A great season so far with Baltimore breathing down their necks. A surprising Cleveland. Cleveland would be even better had it not been for another miracle finish by the Bears. So a tough conference. They're all, they're all in it, yeah. yeah. You know, don't turn off your TV anymore in the NFL. They're all close games. 
Californians for Nebraska. Yeah. They like that. They like that idea. And this would be, uh, I think, I think the Rose Bowl hosting the national championship game is terrific. It's great for college football. Everybody in college football has a shot at it. These Cornhusker fans here really have a shot at it. You see it January 3rd on ABC. Third down and eight. Crouch fakes one way, shovel pass. Collins dropped it. It's incomplete. So they thought they had the right play lined up. But Collins doesn't hold it, and Nebraska's got to give it up. Well, the defensive line that time got in and just caused a little bit of havoc in the backfield. Frank will have some nice things to say to him at halftime, and nice, some nice adjustments, and they'll come back out. Bill Snyder paid Solage a nice compliment about the adjustments they made against Oklahoma coming out for the second half. Remember, the last punt was blocked. The snap is clean. Not the greatest punt in the world. Off the near side, and it takes a huge Kansas State bounce right in front of their bench. It went about 10 yards back the other way. So Kansas State's got good field position. That's yeah. only a 26 yard kick. And Kansas State's got 137 to work with, but no timeouts remaining. Well, they Kansas, trail by six. Kansas State hasn't done a lot, but they've done just enough. And, and Nebraska, we talked about it early, has committed three turnovers, and they've had one punt blocked that was taken in for a touchdown by the offense. And the big thing you said, even if it's just 13 to 7, they've got something oh, to yeah. hang their hat on. It has for sure. To. Out of the shotgun. Fakes it to Cartwright, and Roberson keeps it. Nice game. And the ball came loose at the end of the play. Really? I don't know. The officials are saying it was down right yeah. there. But you talk about going momentum and, and, and emotion and going into halftime. Nebraska will go in leading if it stays the way it is. But they'll go in feeling down, and Kansas State will be behind. And they'll be feeling pretty good. Yeah, no question he was down before the ball came out. Second down and two. Pickup of eight on the last play. Morrell Oberson. And he'll just keep it. This is a run all the way, and he's got a huge hole to run through. Oberson's all the way to the 35-yard line. Oberson to ball game. Boy, that opened up nicely. Good blocking, 21-yard run. From behind the defense, Willie Amos, number 27. He's going to miss a tackle here. He had a lot of room. Cartwright got a nice block on Vedro, the linebacker, and he was off to the races. Yeah, there's Amos with the missed tackle. They still got 44 seconds to work. No timeouts. No timeouts. Stopped momentarily for the first down to move the st sticks. And now Roberson got about three more. And they're going to have to hustle now. Yeah. Bob, as you talked about the Kansas State offense, not a big pass, passing offense, but with the Nebraska defense looking for some kind of pass, there's all kinds of room in the middle. Let's see if they go that way. They're going to go along for Lockett. He's out there, just overshot him. He didn't get his arms out. That was close. That was close. Had a shot. That's what their offense is. That's their style. We mentioned in the in the opening how they like to go for the long balls. Roberson's 0 for 8. Did Lockett even get his hands out for this? No, no he just couldn't quite get it. Just there. couldn't catch up with it. Ricketts was there on the coverage. But this is the way they operate. Run, 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 and then take shots downfield by the little wide receiver screens. Kansas State hasn't completed a pass yet. 14 seconds left to work. They trail by six as we approach halftime. He pump fakes one way. Now he goes deep middle where Swanee talked about. Touchdown to Lockett. Right down the middle. 37 yards, and they're a point away from taking the lead. That's a good play on both ends and a nice call. Swanee. Roberson just bought some time in the pocket, and Lockett just kept coming to the middle of the field. The first pass completion of the day to his own team. Extra point is good. Kansas State leads with six seconds left in the half. 
Here's another look. Watch the offensive protection. He sets up deep, and then he steps up into the pocket, and then just lays it to the inside. And he gets there before the two defenders get there. That's a good throw. Yes. Lockett on the outside gets the release from Gross. But it's inside. Ricketts is against him inside. And makes the play. Nothing like waiting to get a big play right before halftime, huh? Well, they kept throwing it downfield, and they kept keeping it away from the defense. And sooner or later, that's why he's only completing 40% of his passes. When you throw it long, you're not going to complete many, but when you do, it's going to be a big one. Kansas State with 14 unanswered points in the last three minutes of this half. 2.57 to be exact. And the Wildcats have something to cheer about. Line drive kick, which should end the half. Picked up by one of the tight ends. Ringenberg on the return, and that will do it. From a 13 to nothing deficit to a 14-13 lead for Bill Snyder. Halftime, 14-13 Wildcats. We'll be joining John Saunders and Terry Bowden at Times Square Stadium in New York for the Capital One Halftime Show right after this message and a word from our ABC station. Well, John and Terry are going to have to wait. They put two seconds back on the clock. Nebraska's got one play from the 39. Crouch, he'll take off on the run. This will pad Eric's statistics. That's about it. Now the first half comes to a close. And at halftime, the undefeated second-ranked Cornhuskers are in some trouble. They know they're in a fight. As Bill Snyder's team in the final three minutes puts 14 points up. Courtesy of first, a block punt that two plays later turned into a touchdown. And then Roberson, after doing it on the ground, did it through the air. And his Wildcats go to the locker room surprising Nebraska by a point. John and Terry are coming up. And Lincoln, Nebraska trailing by a point. 14-13 is our halftime score. We welcome you back to Memorial Stadium. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy. I remember at the beginning of the game, you said, win the kicking game and throw the long ball. Well, a block punt turned into a touchdown. And if you're Al Roberson and you're only going to complete one pass, make it a long one for a touchdown. And the other thing we said was turnovers. You know, what, what equalizes teams very quickly are turnovers. You hear coaches say it all the time. And special teams in the kicking game. And Kansas State, to get back in with Nebraska, has done one of each. They have blocked the punt that led to a touchdown, and they've uh, entered. They've got two turnovers that led to a touchdown. Yeah, we knew Eric Crouch would be involved as well, obviously. In the first half, Eric off that play fake from the shotgun, just took it, put a great move on at about the 12, and took it in for a 14-yard touchdown. And then it was the defense. Willie Amos picks off this pass and takes it home for the score. But then Roberson from five yards out after that block punt, and then going deep. This is his only completion of the first half. It's Aaron Lockett. It's good for a touchdown. Remember, Nebraska missed an extra point. That's where we are. First half, statistically, look at that average starting field position for Kansas State. 43-yard line. That's impressive. And then the two turnovers by Nebraska. What is not in there is the block punt that led to a touchdown. Nebraska having a kick block. Let's check in with Swanee on the field. Thank you, Brad. You know, well, I talked to Bill Snyder as he left the field. He basically said that he feels that Kansas State was responsible for every point, every point, his and Nebraska's on the scoreboard because they turned the ball over or they took advantage of the turnover or they made the mistakes that allowed Nebraska to score on that one drive where Eric Crouch goes in for the touchdown. I said to him, this reminds me of the, the old Big 12 where you, you gut it out, you play hard, you smash mouth kind of football. He says, well, not quite. He says, yes, we're running the ball well, but if we're going to win this ball game, we're going to have to throw the football up top and make more big plays. Brad? All right, we'll see if they can. Both, both teams are great at adjusting at halftime. Frank Solich is great at it, and so is Bill Snyder. Nebraska has not trailed in the second half this year, so this is new territory for them. Reams kick. Josh Davis will field at the six. 
Out across the 20 to about the 23-yard line, and that's where Nebraska will go to work. Our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Roberson only completed one pass, but he ran for 97 yards. And Lockett, that touchdown catch for him put the team out in front of Nebraska. Crouch, a rushing touchdown and 63 yards, and Willie Amos, the other score on the interception return. Both offenses doing very well on first downs, as you might have noticed. Just outside the 23-yard line, the Huskers go to work, and it's Diedrich. There in Diedrich out across the 28-yard line. Josh Buell made the stop. Darren had some big holes to run through in the first half. He did fumble once, but it didn't turn into any Kansas State points. As K-State actually had three possessions that started in Nebraska territory and only came away with seven points. And there's Darren's numbers so far in the ball game. Second down at five. He'll get it again. Keeps the leg drives and gets across the 32, close to the 32. Nebraska had the ball for seven possessions in the first half and only scored on one of those offensively. They had an interception by their defense and scored the other touchdown. One of the other big plays offensively, remember, for Nebraska was that throwback screen to Thunder Collins that covered 45 yards and set up Eric Crouch for his touchdown run. Third down, a long one. Crouch keeps it, cuts outside, and I don't know, I don't think so. That's a nice play by McGraw on the free safety. I think he's going to stop him short of a first down. Eric looking at the spot. John Lorry, the referee, says we're going to take a look at this thing. And so they'll bring the sticks in. I think he's about the length of the football short, however. So they'll bring the chains. A short way out. And take a look at the spot. Opening possession of the third quarter, always so important. I'm wrong. He's got the first down. Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator, thought his team has held, but Nebraska gets it, and it's a first down. Just outside the 33 yard line. Be careful here now. We have Tom Osborne standing right next to us. We're going to talk to him in a minute. And I kind of get these vibes. He used to call plays on the sideline. This might be an opportunity to go downfield when you, you thought you were going to be stopped for a first down and then you made it. This might be the, the time to go up top. You've got single coverage on the wide receiver down here at the bottom. It's Wilson Thomas wide to the left on the option. Oh. And it's quick draw McGraw again. That's, That's McGraw, like got yeah. him last time. This kid McGraw is an outstanding player. He's a fifth-year senior, plays the violin as a, vi a finance major, and is an All-American type kid. Coming up from the left side, right there. Oh boy, I don't think, I don't think uh, Crouch ever saw it. I don't think so either. So at the 30-yard line, back-to-back -back plays by the safety McGraw. It'll be second down and a long 13. Crouch drops to throw. Quarterback draw. Flags are down. Eric got back near the original line of scrimmage. And that's about it. We're going to move Bob Greasy this way, and we're going to welcome Coach Osborne. I guess I should say third district congressman now. Coach, I can't get used to that. You walk in, I immediately say, hey, Coach, how you doing? It's great to see you. Well, thank you. I, I answer to a lot of names anymore. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not uh, offended by anything you call me. I don't know the geography of this state. Uh, third district is where? Well, it's really the uh, western 85% of the state, so a lot of driving, mostly rural, mostly small towns, but I really enjoy it out there. Well, I know they enjoy having you out there. You're back here for a ball game of very uh, huge magnitude, really. Nebraska rolling along, but Kansas State always plays them tough. Well, they got some good athletes. They're playing real tough. They're involving their safeties in the run, and eventually Nebraska's going to probably have to throw the post. And here comes a throw, 
down. It's complete. And it's a first down out at the 48-yard line. It sounds like a play caller to me on the <laughs> sideline. You were one of the best, Tom. I often compared you to, to, to Steve Spurrier, and I thought Spurrier did a great job in his style of offense of calling plays. There you look at uh, Gibson making the reception on a curl. But I thought in your style of offense, you did just as well a job of calling plays in this system. Do you miss that part of it? Yeah, I do. Uh, as you know, uh, football becomes a chess game, and you really enjoy that. You enjoy the, trying to match up. And, and so that's the part I probably miss most as far as football. Here's a toss. The Diedrich got out to about the 49. Tom, that last play, Gibson got the first down. He's a guy that's played through a lot of injuries and a guy that played for you. There's 17 guys, I guess, out here today that you, uh, you coached. Well, most of the players are redshirted as freshmen. And, of course, John had a bad ACL injury, so he was out of here. And uh, so I started out with a lot of these guys, including Crouch. And, of course, after this year, I won't know very many of the players. <laughs> you had so many great quarterbacks that have played here. Number seven, something special, isn't it? Eric is a great player. He's really a tough player. He gets a lot of yards after contact. Here's a pitch. Diedrich's got a wide open field. He's got the corner, but McGraw drags him down. Still, he got about 18 yards on the run. And Nebraska's got something working on offense. This is what... Phil Bennett told us he wanted to get the ball out of Eric Crouch's hands. You've got to respect the fullback, stop him, force the quarterback to throw, and whoever was supposed to to pick up the pitch man wasn't out there. I guess it was McGraw. He got there a little late. And it's inside the 32 with another first down. Diedrich on his way maybe to another 100-yard game. Came in as the number one rusher in the Big 12 with almost 1,100 yards. That's his best run of the day. He'll get it again, this time straight up the middle, and he bounces off McGraw and got down to about the 26-yard line. Coach, we're going to let you go back and watch the ball game. I want to ask you one other thing. Obviously, Coach Devaney, before you, a couple of championships, you won three in the great decade of the 90s, and now your main assistant, Frank Solich, and I know you'd like nothing more to see them go 14-0 and in the Rose Bowl. Well, they've got a great chance. Uh, we've got a very balanced team, good offense, defense, kicking. And Frank and his staff have done a great job. So I, I hope we can get it done. We've still got Colorado left and probably Oklahoma. So we'll see what happens. Coach, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's been great to be with you guys. Tom, it's always a pleasure. We miss seeing you down in Miami at the Orange Bowl, too. Okay, Bob. Great <laughs> to see you again. Thank All right, you. Buddy. And again, I call him Coach. That's an automatic. Well, I'll always go. Yeah, coach. I know. So we thank him for joining us. Legendary coach of the Cornhuskers. And now his team... And Frank Solich's team has got something moving here. So important on the opening drive of the third quarter. We talk about it, it seems like, week in and week out. And this first five minutes has belonged to Nebraska. Deidre hurdles him there. Gets down to the 16. Well, Nebraska takes the ball on the opening kickoff second half after making adjustments at the halftime and moves it all the way down the field. Now they just need to convert once they get down there. Took the crowd a little while to get back into it. They were stunned by the final three minutes of the second quarter. And now the Huskers at the 16-yard line, the 12th play of the drive. Nice play defensively. And it's Terry Pierce, the middle linebacker. Loss of two on the play. Pierce was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Defensive Freshman of the Year, I should say, last year. Here he is right here, Brad. Watch him as he's just going to flow. He's going to watch the flow of the option, and he's assigned to take the quarterback. Fights off the block of Galladay. Good play. And he's the picture-perfect size for a middle linebacker, 6'3", 250. Third down, big play here for both clubs. A third down and eight at the 18-yard line. Crouch keeps it, has an opening. Eric Crouch, head to the end zone. He got down to the one-yard line. 17 yards for Crouch. He is so dangerous. That time, Nebraska spreads them from left to right with wide receivers and you got to you got to send guys out there with them but you always have the threat of Eric Crouch McGraw goes down on a nice block 
and he just misses getting in the end zone. He's got more moves than bad Mexican food. <laughs> First and goal. Diedrich dropped for a loss of a yard. Josh Buell made the play. 8-19 remaining in the third quarter. It is Kansas State by a point and a second and goal Nebraska coming up. Crouch has already rushed for one touchdown today. 57 on his career. He looks to the sideline. They send in some new bodies. You add including up. Wistrom, the tight end. You add up the touchdowns passing and rushing, and he's had 87 in his career. Diedrichs, the eye back. Wistrom, the tight end, is out on the left side. Second and goal. Diedrich on a toss sweep to the end zone. Got there. Touchdown. the big offensive guard number 77 this is what you call a pancake right there when you take the man to the ground that's the pancake that was Diedrich. one of them they had a couple of pancakes yep. Wistrom got one and then Diedrich did the rest as he carried Yates in with him two point conversion Crouch wants to throw for it has a man open whoa Incomplete. That looked like a wild pitch. Yeah, that was way off. That looked, that looked like it squirted out of his hand. There is a flag down in the end zone. They might have had a hold it. He looked like he had a tight end wide open, and that ball, exactly. I don't know if it slipped or what. He had a guy standing back there, and he almost hit the goal post with a pass. Now, with a penalty, half the distance, does that change what they want to do and maybe go well, option here? Well, yes. I, I, I say, you know, this is a running team, and, you know, the chances of them making it passing are probably a lot less than the they, chances of them running the football in. Just outside the one. Diedrich, two-point conversions good. There you go. two more signs though before that <laughs> Colorado and then the Big 12 championship but this one's not over either penalty marker on the field it's just to delay a game after a fair catch signal it's only five yards He's you can't to... advance a fair catch and they've been trying to explain that to the Kansas State players yeah. for a quarter now and they're not getting it let's go back to the two-point conversion watch the uh, tight end right here Right there, right here is the hold by McGraw, 38. That got a flag and got another try for Nebraska on a two-point try, which they made. Nebraska's drive was 77 yards for the touchdown. Swanick. It's so loud, I don't think Lynn can hear me. Swanick. All right. That's the kind of noise this place is putting out right now. This is hard. I can't hear you because the crowd here is just so loud. <laughs> Here's a toss. Scobie to about the 20, only a yard gain. It's, it's an educated crowd, Brad. They uh, they turn up the volume at the right time, <laughs> then they just go right back down. But after that two-point conversion, Bill Snyder was very upset talking to the officials. Not so much about the holding call against Kansas State, but the holding call he felt that should have been called against Nebraska when they took it in for the touchdown. Seems like Fullerton uh, had his hand in the uh, pancake batter. <laughs> yeah, they got the syrup going right now. And Cartwright is not giving that one up. Bob said earlier it looked like he wanted to keep it, and he almost took yeah. Roberson's hands with him on that one. First down run. 
The if Rock. Don't, if you don't watch out, uh, Roberson is going to be hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be flapping out the backside as he grabs that ball and goes. Rock Cartwright is 5'8", 240 plus pounds. He's a fire plug. He just ran for 10 yards and a first down. At the 30. Oh, what a play on defense by Clinton. He's been making plays all day, Clinton. The umpire just saying, don't be celebrating too much and yep. draw a penalty. He did. Number 55 right in the center of it. He's the one that caused the poor throw and the interception. He's, he's already had a 20-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown this year, yep. so he's making some plays in the middle. That was against Troy State, and you saw the hands up celebrating a little bit. They didn't call anything. Nebraska with 38 sacks after a season low last year of 25, and they've got another one. The defense coming to life for this crowd on Seniors Day. Adjusting after halftime, first series coming out. Vedro number nine's coming. Adams, 98, is free. It's a jailbreak on the quarterback. They can share that sack. Adams with six and a half on the season. Listen to the crowd. Now it's third down and 23. Yeah, and here you just don't make a mistake. Third and 23, a punt is okay. It's the fourth time it's been third and 10 or more. Roberson got the pass away, but it's incomplete again. It was pressure. Selector that time put on the heat. Kansas State's got to give it up. is back and this is where Ronsick doesn't want to make a mistake he's back near his own goal line remember Nebraska had one blocked in the first half well you pick and choose the best time to go for a punt block they look like they're loaded up nope they back out of it and it's a nice kick gross from the 41 gross look out look out he might go shirts come over here and you have a left return sometimes all the red shirts come over here and you have a right return but look at this look where all the red shirts are this is a center return and they want to get them right up the middle again they do the high kick to keep it out of Lockett's hands taken by Pierce the linebacker on a fair catch and Kansas State will have to work again from that spot and when you have a center return you aim back up the center all the red shirts just try to find somebody and stay with them and gross does a great job of taking that center return and says hey i see something to the left i think i'm going out there boys and he made a big decision 60 yard touchdown l roberson now will he have to throw he's one for ten throwing the football They'll keep it on the ground on the option, and he keeps it himself, and he's into the secondary. Roberson's got a pickup of about 13, and he's out near the 40-yard line. They don't, they won't go to their throwing game, Brad, because that, that's not their, what they are. They, they'll make a big play running this play right here. If they need a big play, they'll pitch it to Scobie, or they'll keep with, with Robertson. 
Roberson, and they'll just they'll just make a big play there. If you can pick up 13 yards every time, you got it going. He's got 97 yards on 14 carries. And a touchdown. Throwing and running. From the 39. Flags down, and they blow the play dead. Washington moved. Prior to snap. Full start offense. Five yards. We play first down. They check in now. John Saunders, Times Square Stadium in New York. John. Brad, the Burger King update, NC State facing Florida State. Chris Ricks not having a great day, but he's keeping his team around. 22 yards here to Tallman Gardner for the touchdown. They come back once again, but trail 24-21, Brad. What is that, about seven touchdown passes to Gardner yeah. in the last three weeks? I think, I think Chris Ricks and Gardner got something going. First down at 15. And it's a keeper by Roberson and another nice run. He gets out to the 45-yard line. Pickup of 11. Well, Vedro had an opportunity to tackle him and make the play in the backfield, but Roberson just gave him a slip step and picked up some nice yardage. Watch Vedro number nine. He's going to be the guy that has a shot in the backfield. Right there. Overran it. Second down and four coming up for Kansas State. A little under three and a half to go third quarter. They now trail by 14. Play action. Roberson going to go long. And it's intercepted by Avis again. Avis has one touchdown today. Roberson's the only guy with a shot at him, and he got him at the 15-yard line. He's waiting for him to come open. He's waiting. He's waiting. But he's not open. He's got two guys on him, and he underthrows the football. Amos picks it off and really wants to get in the end zone, but doesn't make it. Roberson cut him off, or he would have scored. There was three guys there, really. There was three. The Booker 14 was beyond those. Sometimes you just can't throw the football there. Here's Thunder Collins. Down to the 11, maybe inside of the 10. Corey White made the tackle. Now it's Nebraska's turn offensively to do something with that turnover. Frank Solich calling the plays. I made a statement about four years ago when Frank first took over that they would probably miss Tom Osborne more as an offensive coordinator than they would as a head coach because Tom was so good at calling plays. I think Frank is as good as Tom was almost after four years. Second and seven. The option. Number seven's got it. Crouch. Down to the five. <laughs> Terrence Newman saved a touchdown. Crouch got six. We approach two minutes in the third quarter, and Nebraska's got it inside the Kansas State five again, and they got third down and about a yard. So they can do whatever they want here because they're only a yard from a first down. They can get it first and goal inside the four. They can try to get a touchdown, yeah. whatever. Right now, third and one. Collins, I think he got the one. And it'll be first and goal at about the three. Brad, the defense is loving it. Not that the defense should be tired. They really haven't been on the field that much. But at least if the offense stays on the field for a couple more plays, the defense can get it, catch its breath a little bit, regroup and say, okay, boys, let's go back out and do it again. Yeah, they're going to have to load up down there. They're going to bring the chains out to look at this. Here's your boy, uh, Benny uh, Finoni, right here. Watch, he's just going to come around. Watch this footwork. Watch his dance. He slides around. Now, here's your other pancake. Right? Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's not fair. How would you like to be a DB and see number 77 coming after you? As a wide receiver, <laughs> what I do is say, look, I got to go one-on-one -on -one against this guy. Here's his number. Next time you go in that secondary, soften him up a little bit yeah. for me. <laughs> I think he just did that on that I mean, last a guy play. that big, 340 pounds, they list him at, with such good feet. He just kind of, he's light on his feet. First and goal, Nebraska. 
The toss to Collins. And Kansas State all over. And we got a penalty marker in the end zone. Strange spot where the flag was thrown for where the play ended. Illegal chop block. That's why. Our Dodge drive summary. Nebraska in this third quarter. Two drives. One of them 77 yards and 15 plays took over seven minutes. And the current drive three plays for 10 yards and it is coming after a 50 yard interception return. Yeah the second half has been all Cornhuskers. Bob what was it that Frank Solich told us in the meeting he said a lot of times our team will come out and play in the first half and it may not look like we're doing a whole lot but we don't panic because some of what we're trying to do is not really going to get done until the second half. We wear them down. We kind of develop our strategy a little bit. And we feel comfortable with what we're doing. Then we go after them. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's exactly what they've done. Now they have a first and goal back at the 19 yard line after the penalty. Crouch will work from the shotgun. Flanked by Collins. This might be a forward option here. Collins is the man that gets it. Down inside the 10 again. Lieber made the tackle. And Derek Yates is down, injured. Uh, sold out. Memorial Stadium for the 247th time. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. If you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge Pacific Life annuities insurance investments discover the power of Pacific Life. Burger King home of the Whopper and America's Dairy Farms the power of cheese. Boy, it's a great day in the Midwest, isn't it? It's gorgeous. And right now, Derek Yates isn't thinking it's that gorgeous. Well, he did walk off. The ball is inside the nine yard line now. We'll call it the eight with a second down and goal. Three wide receivers set for Eric Crouch. And again, he's in the shotgun. He'll keep it himself. Crouch cuts outside. Inside the five and down near the three. As they got back to uh, where the original line of scrimmage would have been before the chop block. Watch the moves Eric Crouch has. Garrison and Cody, the offensive lineman. <laughs> he had, Tyler didn't have a chance. Tyler just he waved a hand. He didn't see those guys coming. Inside, though. <laughs> the fans to our right are loving this because the third quarter's come to a close and they'll see their Cornhuskers have it in a goal to go situation inside the three when the fourth quarter starts. 28 to 14, the number two team in the country with a huge third quarter. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. had eight home games was 1905 he was there <laughs> I think or hat was uh, the hat was definitely the hat here was there, yeah. we start the fourth quarter Brad Nessler Bob Greasy Lynn Swan the Huskers with a third and goal just outside the three yard line Collins in motion he gets the handoff on the end around a stiff arm looking for some blockers and now a flag down and this one lost big yardage. I tell you what, I've seen that play all over college football. I don't think I've ever seen that play work. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I usually get behind the offenses when I do a game, and I'm rooting for each offense. And that's <laughs> one play. Offense, the penalty is declined. Fourth down. So it's fourth down, and that'll bring out the field goal unit. And the reason is, at least, you just you're so close to the line of scrimmage into the offensive line and you're running so fast side, sideways that that you can't turn up. Josh Brown will try 28 yard field goal. 
He's missed one today. Snap was a little bad. The hold was good though, and the kick is. Josh Brown from 28. And that puts the Huskers in front now 31 to 14. Nebraska has dominated the second half. Our Pacific Life game summary. Darren Diedrich did a lot of the work, got in the end zone and the two-point conversion. Then the defense took over and stuffed Roberson back-to-back -back sacks. And then Dewan Gross on a picture-perfect punt return of 60 yards. And Roberson trying to throw again and for the second time. Willie Amos with the interception. And he takes it back, and that set up the field goal. And the last time there was a Nebraska player that had two interceptions in a game, it was Mike Brown against Texas A&M back in 1999. The funny thing Where's Mike about Brown that, now? Mike Brown, <laughs> the last two weeks has won overtime games for the Chicago Bears. And one other part of that, Dewan Gross is from a Cleveland suburb. Dewan Gross said this week, my man is killing. He killed my Cleveland Browns in overtime. But at least it's Mike Brown and he's a Cornhusker. Yeah, it's an ex-teammate. And the high kick, Scobie takes at the 19, and this time, nice return out to the 40. 21-yard kick return, and good field position for Kansas State to work with, but they're 17 down now. Reminder, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, Syracuse and Miami. Miami survived today. Michigan, Wisconsin, Washington State, and Washington in the Pac-10, and Michigan, Wisconsin. Michigan, a winner today over Minnesota, so they continue what they hope is their drive to the Big Ten title. Last time we saw Penn State was beating Illinois 21-7. New quarterback is Mark Dunn. Roberson may be done for the day. Here's the big fella, Hall, and he's running over people. Hall all the way down to the 36-yard line of Nebraska. He was a big item a couple of years ago when he first got to Literally Kansas a big State. item. Yeah. And uh, had a little problem. I don't think he was going to class. Got that all squared away last year. Now he's back. And he's a load. That's a career long run for him. 22 rumbling yards out of the 36 yard line. Lockett and Clark are the wideouts to the right side. Sproles will be the motion man as they give it to the big fella again. And Hall got about four. T.J. Hollowell made the stop as Nebraska right now has some of their backup people in defensively. I don't think there's been any injury to L. Roberson, but I, in the past, Snyder has just alternated the quarterbacks. I think he wants to get done in, see what he can do. He's a junior college guy, as you mentioned. Well, L. threw a touchdown pass, and he ran for one, but he made a couple of terrible decisions on throws that shouldn't have been made. Yeah. Here's Sproles. They fake that play. Bob hates, and they go to the big guy. And hauls to the 29-yard line. Scott Shanley, the linebacker, made the hit. Well, quarterbacking, and, and, and especially throwing the football, is so much decision-making. You have to make right decisions. And Roberson is playing for the first time this year, and you have to learn, you know, when, when to make decisions and when to let it go and when not to. Well, Roberson and Dunn combined had never made a Division I A start as quarterbacks this year, so that's what Kansas State came into this season with. And here's... Scobie, I think he's got the first down. Josh trying to stretch it out down to about the 26-yard line. Going to be very close, maybe close enough to measure. Well, Brad and Bob, Mark Dunn at least brings in that that age factor, that uh, that winky factor of, of being an older guy behind center and some more maturity. And he's from Utah. He went on the mission for two years down in Santiago, Chile. I mean, he's a guy who's married. He's He's 23 years old, and he's he's not the kind of guy that, you know, like a Chris Winkie that's going to hang out late at night with the guys. He's got responsibility, and I think you'll see those kinds of things show up in his leadership on the football field. His wife, Elizabeth, wouldn't let him hang out at night. <laughs> yeah. His passing stats are not that much different than L. Roberson's, but... Um, he does bring a little bit different uh, flair to the position. Well, he obviously put up huge numbers in junior college. Yeah. He was the NJC AA's player of the year. 4,351 yards and 42 touchdowns just last season. So he knows how to throw yeah, the ball. And both of these guys are young. They'll both be back next year. So this offense should get nothing but better. At the 26-yard line. It's a first down. And now it's Cartwright. 
And Cartwright got to the 23. Nelson and Kelsey combine on the stop. Every time I see a tight end standing up at the line of scrimmage, like the Kansas State tight end. I think of Iowa, don't you? I think of Hayden Fry. <laughs> Hayden Fry. And you know, Bill Snyder was at Iowa with the Hayden, and uh, I saw the tight end uh, for Kansas State standing up. There's a look at Warren. He's getting down this time. I'd be willing to bet you Coach Fry is watching this game. Yeah, I bet he is. And all the best to you if you're watching, Hayden. Straight ahead is Hall to the 21. And it's going to bring up a third down and a long five. A reminder, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. On a gorgeous day in Lincoln, Nebraska, especially for November. Pretty good football game, but the Huskers have dominated since halftime when they trailed by one. And they hadn't trailed in a second half all year. Year. They're making up for it here so far. Awesome. Kansas State's got something going. They need this third down. They're 4 of 11 on their third down conversions. Done. Fires out to Scobie, but a great open field hit by Dewan Gross. That's just good defense. Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator, playing man coverage. Stop the run. Everybody else, play your man. Here's the Cleveland suburb native I was talking about, Dewan Gross with a big hit. These corners are very good. Yeah, they are. Carver on one side, Gross on the other side. Sweeney is, a, is the third corner. He has 37 starts in his career, and he's the number three guy. Fourth down and got to go for it for Kansas State. Fourth and eight. Three wide outs for Dunn. Here comes a blitz. Dunn lofts it. Got a man. Not. Nope. A touchdown, though. Clark couldn't hold it, and Gross was covering him. I tell you what, the ball was right there. Clark just didn't, couldn't find the handle. Good throw. And Nebraska will take over on downs when we come back. Ten minutes and 45 seconds left in the ball game. Kansas State just that close to a touchdown, but the Huskers hold. What a sight, huh? Sun going down in Lincoln. Our Pacific Life game summary in this one. Dominated by Nebraska in this second half. Kansas State a couple of turnovers. Only 32 passing yards, and that was the touchdown catch. Two Willie Amos interceptions for Nebraska. Crouch, a rushing touchdown on the ground. 60 yards through the air. The most important one, that screen pass to Thunder Collins of 45 yards that set up one of Eric's runs. That was the 14-yard touchdown. Yeah. Second half has been all Nebraska. You know, tradition of Cornhusker football, 763 wins. We mentioned earlier five national championships, three of those in the 90s. 32 consecutive bowl bids, a couple of Heisman Trophy winners. Name them quick. Who's the two Heisman Trophy winners? Uh, Rodgers and what's his name? Yeah, Mike Rozier, Rozier. see? You can't just say what's his name. Yeah, That's well. cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska works on offense now, and Crouch got maybe a half yard. Josh Buell stayed home, made the stop. Oh, 763 wins, number three all time, by the way. This could be the third right here, you know, at, uh, with, with players getting in problems around the country, suspensions in uh, here. Well, Sean Foster there. didn't play today, yeah. and uh, Kenny Dorsey threw four interceptions today, and we don't quite know how Joey Harrington's doing, but Eric Crouch is in the hunt. There's no doubt about that. And you and I and Swanee are all alike in that we can't stand talking about the Heisman on the first week of the season, but I don't mind in week 11. Right, right. Down the road where we got something to talk about. Now, you can't look at Eric Crouch as a pure quarterback. And you can't look at him as a pure running back. you got to do a little combination stuff. Look at what him you, as a winner. He's yeah. on his way to his 35th <laughs> win in 40 starts. That ain't bad. 31-14. we got 10 minutes, 4 seconds left in the game. 10.04 left to play. Nebraska leading by 17. They've scored 18 unanswered points. They were down at halftime by one. They've done the same thing to Kansas State in the second half that they did to Oklahoma. They came back out, they won the game in the second half. Second down and a long nine for Crouch. 
On the give to Diedrich. Up the middle. And Darren. Hey, he could stumble for four yards. Yeah. Looked like he was going to be stopped at the 29. He got all the way out to the 32. We talked about Eric Crouch. He's been mentioned among the Heisman and all the other awards. He talked with us about what that means. All the things that have, have come up this year have, uh, have really been uh, exciting things for me, uh, things that I look at and uh, I'm very proud of. And, uh, you know, I know that it's a possibility for one of those awards to be, uh, you know, sitting on my shelf someday. And, uh, you know, the feeling is... You know, it makes me speechless in a way. Diedrich is going to be dropped for a loss. I mean, when you talk about Crouch, I mean, you, you have to talk about Eric Crouch, the football player, and what he does and how he does it. You can't compare his numbers with Ken Dorsey or Rex Grossman, Grossman or, yeah, or right. Harrington at, at Oregon. Uh, you can't compare him stat for stat, passing numbers. You have to compare his rushing and what he does and the option and all this other stuff. No option quarterback has ever won the Heisman, but this guy should should be one of the top considerations. I'm not saying that he should win it. Right. We're just saying he's, he's, he should be right there. Well, he's on pace to go over 1,000 yards rushing, of course, and end up with who knows what, anything from 1,500 to 2,000 passing. And he said this year 2,000 passing was one of his goals, actually. And if you throw for 2,000 and Private run for 1,000, you've had a season. Offense, yeah. five yards, replay. Well, I also asked him yesterday, as we take a look at the uh, career wins. He can get all the way up to Rick Leach if they run the table. He can't catch Peyton. They don't have enough games even if they make the Rose Bowl to win it. Yeah. I asked him, I said, what would you rather have, 50-yard touchdown pass or a 50-yard <laughs> yard run? He says, I've had a lot of 50-yard <laughs> runs. <laughs> you take a few of those passes. <laughs> Larson to kick. He just got it away. They put some pressure on him. Lockett will field from the 34. Aaron Lockett near midfield about a 16 yard return and good field position again for Kansas State but the clock is working against him and shows the scoreboard 823 to play it's 31 14 Nebraska from midfield trailing by 17 and time running out on him they need some points and they need him fast Duns the quarterback in for Roberson who threw and completed only one pass today. That was for a touchdown. And they need several more completions right now. Here's a pitch on the end around. Little room for Sproles. Nice run. Willie Amos knocked him off his feet, but Sproles got 20. Sproles lined up as a wide receiver. He's a running back, a true freshman running back. Came back, snapped the ball when he was right behind the formation. Fake to the fullback and the pitch to him, and you got this play with a running back. This, uh, you know, Kansas State, you know, they don't miss much. I mean, Ron Hudson and uh, Snyder doing a nice job offensively. Sproles, a 10 600 guy in high school, got 20 on that last carry. Now it's Hall. Hall down to the 25. Under eight minutes here. Let's check in with John at Times Square Stadium in New York. Well, Brad, NC State is looking to become the first ACC team to beat Florida State twice. Hard to imagine, but that's Ray Robinson, 24 yards on that touchdown run, a 31-21 lead right now. Elsewhere, Oregon has just taken the lead over UCLA on a Harrington touchdown pass, and Penn State has fallen behind the Illini by three. Got a few that are going to go down to the wire. Yeah. Second down and five. Dunn running for his life, trying to get a throw off to Lloyd, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Bunch of close games this afternoon. Yep. So Dunn's got a third and five upcoming. You know, the last the last two games, Kansas State has run for a lot of yardage, but in each game they've only completed five passes. I don't think they've completed that many today. I think they've they've only had two completions. Can't be that one dimensional. Well, they complete one, but it's so short it might as well have been a run. Cartwright at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if he got two feet out of that. Yeah, that's their third completion of the day. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report. John and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the country and update all those nail biters that John just told us about, all those in the games that uh, occurred earlier today. 
Miami had to struggle and survive to remain unbeaten. The last time I saw BYU and Wyoming were tied. That was at halftime, though, so that game's close to where we are, which we're at 640 remaining here. The three unbeatens coming in. Miami, BYU, and this Nebraska team trying to go to 11-0. Done. Completes it, and it's a first down toss down to the 17-yard line. Got it to Lockett. Lockett was a big part of this offense in the past, but he was not the main receiver. He was not the go-to guy. This year, he was the main guy and not catching as many passes. He had just one catch in the last three games coming into this one. Career-wise coming in, he's caught a, he had caught 129 passes and 13 touchdowns. That was number four in both categories in Kansas State history. Dunn tried to go to him again and skipped it off his hands at the 12-yard line. Well, you got to make that play. Whether the ball was thrown too hard and too high or, or lock, it should have hung on. But you're in that situation. That should just be a no-brainer. you got to make the play. Lock it in motion. He's going to stop and go work back to the outside. Oh, you got to catch that. you got to catch that ball. Lockett will trot out with Lloyd to the right side. Might have, been able, dual receiver there. might have been able to run that ball in the end zone. Brandon Clark comes wide left. Looked like Free Nebraska play. was offside. If Dunn can get a throw away, but he can't because Kelsey tracks him down from behind. And now Nebraska going the other way with the ball. I think this is all coming back yeah. with an offside call. Yeah, but the quarterback is getting up very slowly. Or not at all. He didn't see Kelsey coming up from behind. It's offside, Nebraska. It'll all come offside back if defense. Mark Dunn can get his wits about him. Right here. There's Adams offside. Getting a jump. You call this a free play until Kelsey comes from yeah. the backside and plants exactly his helmet right. right between your yeah. shoulder blades. Yeah. There's some point in time where an official will blow a whistle and say, stop the play because we don't want the quarterback to get hurt. But if it happens there, there's mm. there's there's a good shot of a quarterback maybe getting hurt. A big defensive lineman coming up from behind. But then then you don't stop it because well he just jumped offside a little bit right. and now you get a free play. And Ro that's what he was trying to get. Roberson's gonna have to come back in. Yeah. Dunn's just too shook up right now. They have a second down and five. This would be a great opportunity. Roberson with a good wheels. And that's what Nebraska's they're thinking run here. And they get run here, but he still finds a way to get down near the goal line. All the way to the one. L. Roberson is just a sophomore, a redshirt sophomore, so he'll have two more years in this system. Remember Michael Bishop? Mm -hmm. He was a great runner who got better and better as a, a passing quarterback in the same style of system. That is, forget about the short routes and all that other stuff. Throw the ball down the field deep and maybe some screen passes. Well, nobody's, Jonathan Beasley's never going to make anybody forget you or name it, but he got better too yeah. as a quarterback. touchdown is Joe Hall so now it's 31 to 20 Brad Bob I've decided that the only way to get ready for a back like Joe Hall is to bring in a couple of bulls at practice <laughs> or go and take all your defensive players and send them to the rodeo and strap them in hey, I just have three cheeseburgers on a platter and go the opposite direction <laughs> the extra point now by Reem Oh, he tucked it in there, barely. So 31-21. And still 522 remaining. The big guy, 290, 300, whatever. Touchdown from a yard out. Nebraska's lead's been cut to 10. 522 left. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan with you from Lincoln. All right, boys, do you onside kick here or not? 
I say no. Lynn, what do you say? I say yeah. I say go for it. I mean, look at the way Nebraska possessed the ball in the first drive of the second half. If they don't do it now, Nebraska could give up the whole five minutes and the game's over anyway. Well, look, Lynn, look or turn around, look at the field. Nebraska is not ready for an onside kick. Oh, don't be surprised. They could be fooling everybody. They only got five guys within 10 yards of the ball. Okay, so I'm not a coach. <laughs> We find out right here as they kick differently than they have all day, actually. Down the bounce, taken at the four by Josh Davis. And Davis got out to the 25 yard line. And that's where Nebraska has it with 5 12 left. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. New Pepsi Twist, Pepsi and Diet Pepsi with a twist of lemon. Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Wooder. Move your money, get well connected. And original Coors, nothing beats an original. And almost nothing beats the weight room at Nebraska if you've ever had a chance to look at it. You only need one little corner of that for what most of us do, workout wise. <laughs> yeah. I go in there every time I'm in Nebraska, Brad, and the coaches, the guys over there, boy, that play, very helpful. It's quite a place in itself. Crouch on the keeper. Eric got a couple. Well, obviously, what Kansas State needs is a stop. Three and out and, uh, or a turnover. And uh, you're trying to do that against one of the best rushing teams in the history of college football. Kansas State has its full complement of timeouts as we're under five minutes now. Eric Crouch at the controls with Collins the tailback. Crouch with Davies in front of him keeps it late pitch to Collins down the sideline and he cuts back to the middle of the field wisely not going out of bounds he picks up 18 in the first down nice play by Collins and a risky play somewhat risky by Crouch to pitch it that late you don't see Eric pitch it a lot he likes to keep the ball it looked like Collins might have been a little bit surprised. He was near the sideline and just kind of said, all right, Eric, I'm going to watch, see what you do here. Nice cut back to the middle of the field to yeah. keep the clock yeah. moving. Of course, we asked Derek uh, about pitches and that kind of thing yesterday. He said he once ran down the field about 15 yards waiting for a pitch. <laughs> we can believe that. At the 46, now you go with a fullback right up the middle. Judd Davies... We're under four minutes. Well, you talk about Nebraska. You know, they're off next week, Brad. They have one more game left, and it's at Colorado. Colorado, over the years, has been a very tough opponent for uh, Nebraska. They've beaten them the last four times, but it's been all four games have been very close. They've got it out to the 49-yard line, second down and seven. You take a look at other scores from around the country today. Nebraska trying to stay perfect, leading by 10. They can't drop the football here. That's the main thing, and Crouch just ran for another first down. Big time run. McGraw tripped him up, but he'll move the sticks again. Crouch is over 100 on the ground. Brad, Fulton team number 77 has been doing a great job, but, and we talked about his size. Take a look at this calf. They measure his calves. His calves are 21 inches around. That's almost two feet. Matter of fact, Thursday during practice, I noticed how big his calves were. I walked over to Thunder Collins, number one. I put my hands around his thighs, about midway up his thighs. Fulton team's calves are bigger than his thighs. <laughs> Unbelievable legs on the guy. They list him as Collins takes it laterally for about a yard. They list him at 340 pounds. We've heard anywhere from 340 to 363, and he's 19 years old. 6'4, 340 is listed. Just a young guy. But you look, you look at him, he looks like he's 30, 35 years old. <laughs> he could get in. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. I, I won't. He could get in where we're going tonight. He can get is what you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> he can get anywhere he wants. Just that big, that big being size, you know. Second down and nine. You led me right down that night. Took the bait. Here's Crouch keeping as he sweeps the left side. He wants to stay in bounds. Took a big hit to pay for it. Pierce made the tackle, and we're down here two minutes. 
Two minutes away from Nebraska going to 11 and 0 and running their winning streak at home to 21 straight. And as Bob said, then it's Colorado in an all important game on Thanksgiving weekend. And if they win that one, it's a Big 12 championship in Texas to wrap things up. If they can do that, they'd go to the Rose Bowl to play for the national championship. So right now, in their final home game of the year, they're 158 away from being 11 and 0. 21 206 left. Swally talked about it earlier. This place could be called the International House of Pancakes. We're going to watch it play after this next snap with number 77. In fact, we got time to do it right here. This is what an All American lineman looks like. Watch this. He runs over a 250 pound linebacker and he says, You know, Lieber, way to hang in there, buddy. <laughs> Holy cow. That's something else. He's had a bunch of those this year. He's a Hawaiian. He was just inviting him out to the islands. <laughs> Crouch is going to throw off play action, and it's intercepted. So Kansas State has life. And it's McGraw who picks it off. Not a very good throw. Going for Wilson Thomas. That surprises me a little bit. That call was from the bench. Frank Solich calling. Had a lot of time to talk about it. A lot of time to think about it. Too high, way too high. He never saw the uh, McGraw from the other side coming over. Well, this game's not over yet. He, Crouch thought that there was only one defensive guy back there. Crouch, McGraw backed up from the other side, and, and Eric never saw it. Kansas State takes over. Dunn's back in at quarterback after being shaken up by Kelsey. And now they go with a three wide out offense from their own 10 yard line. Done. Has to dance around. Finally pulls a trigger. Has Lockett. But it's intercepted. Picked off by Ricketts. And Nebraska's got it right back. What you're seeing here is the left hand of both of these offenses. Neither one of them likes to throw. He said coming into the ball game, Nebraska was first in the nation running and 109th passing. Great interception. Nice play on the football. Kansas State's just about as bad. They're about 105th in the nation passing the ball and fifth rushing. For all you southpaws out there, Bob meant this isn't a left-handed team in either case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're forcing them to do they're off suit. what they don't want to do. Right. And so Nebraska takes over, and I bet they won't throw. Diedrich looking for his 100. That might be it or very close to it. Let's check in John Saunders as we've got 140 left here. Guys, Joe Paterno perhaps pulling out a little magic here. Falling down 27-21 to Illinois. Watch Larry Johnson. Should have been tackled three or four times. Comes out of the pack and then takes off. Searching for daylight and the touchdown. 97 yards on the kick return. And Penn State has grabbed a one-point lead just about three minutes away from going 4-4 four four after starting over. Wow, that's wow. something else, huh? Well, they have some weird games down over there in Illinois, don't they? Yes. Michigan a couple of years yep. ago. Davies, the fullback, keeps for a first down run, and now the clock and everything else in the favor of the Cornhuskers. 106 left. They lead by 10. Nebraska moves on. The three undefeated teams. Well, Miami and Nebraska, at least. Miami has won 18 straight. That's the longest in the country. Nebraska now will have won its 13th straight. 21 straight at home, which is the longest in the nation as well. Nebraska goes to Colorado in a couple weeks, and then the Big 12 championship game. Diedrich over 100 himself and dancing for more. Aaron down to the 15, so 200-yard rushers today for Nebraska. In Diedrich and Crouch. There's what Bob's talking about. This will go as a W to make it 11 and 0. Yeah. This is a team that could end up 14 and 0. Yep. Colorado, that's in two weeks. The Buffaloes are also, also open next week, so they both have a week to prepare, two weeks to prepare for that game. This is the 11th time in school history that Nebraska had won 10 games, and they're about to go to 11 again. They've done that before as well. Final play of the ball game here. Crouch. And that's going to do it. 
Nebraska wins on senior day. At home, packed house, had to fight for it. There's McGraw and Crouch, a lot of respect between those two and both these guys, teams. Yeah. 31 to 21 is the final. Our Chevrolet players of the game, we just mentioned one, John McGraw, who had 11 tackles and an interception, and Willie Amos had two interceptions. First guy since Mike Brown to have two picks in a game for Nebraska. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each university's general scholarship fund in their names. Still unbeaten, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and still unbeaten, the Hurricanes of Miami. Are they on a collision course? We don't know yet. A lot of football left in the season. Final score, 31-21, Nebraska. That's going to wrap it up from Lincoln. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long. From Lincoln, Nebraska. A winner for the Cornhuskers by 10 over Kansas State. Time now to join John Saunders at Times Square Stadium in New York. John.